Pickleball tip number seven from Colin Johns. Lob, love very much, lobbed often. <laughs> Pickleball lovers, please leave comments, please subscribe, and don't forget to have a good day. It's Mark Napotovich, top right hand corner. Now they have 10, right? This is a following point, Mark Topotovich. He's in a blue shirt, not red this time. He wins the game with a lob against two senior pros. Two senior pros. And I'm just sitting here thinking Colin Johns is right about everything. Hit more lobs in tournaments, you win more games. Colin Johns says amateur players don't quite put that overhead away like in the pro divisions. They might defend the lob decently, right? And we'll go over that coverage, but they don't quite put the ball away. That's why lobs are so effective because defending them are a little complicated yes they are when people are tense at tournaments it's tougher to move right it's tougher to move tougher to communicate everything's a little tougher and look at them try to put this overhead away cliff is in the near left hand corner he's a pro pretty much he can put the ball away a little better but when you get tired especially in rec play or tournaments you don't quite feel like moving as much you might be nervous you might be tired especially in a tournament so keep that in mind joey keep going a point i just want to point out and i think you should know the difference no if it's a defensive lob or offensive lob, you're throwing up. If it's defensive, you're probably at the baseline. You're throwing it up because you're in trouble because of the kitchen. Third shot lobs can be offensive. They return the ball. You throw up an offensive lob, lots of topspin. They're running in the kitchen. And lots of times this can be a winner. I've seen it a lot, especially from Mark Napotovich. The other time you can hit a really good offensive lob, and it might be a winner, is if you're both at the kitchen. Everyone's at the kitchen, and you pretend to disguise it as a dink. You really accelerate up quickly and hit cross court. And if you hit cross court with this, it might really confuse them, just like hitting cross court in regular play. This is an offensive lob, right? Take a look. Everyone will be at the kitchen, and he disguises that as a dead dink, offensive lob. And again, is that the right play? A third shot drop works so much more effective than a drive in this circumstance. No need to be a hero, but would you still love me? If my name wasn't Superman, this is another offensive lob and a beautiful cover, right? If you're trying to cover, this is pretty much textbook. So take a look, right? Beautiful offensive lob, great cover, right? Beautiful cover. Now the person in white in the top right hand corner had the head of steam, so he could have covered that. But again, with lob coverage, it's what your partner feels comfortable with, right? He feels comfortable hitting that backhand drop, and most people don't. So that's what you have to keep in mind. Another one, this is more defensive, right? Defensive lob coverage. But keep in mind, if it's a very tough overhead, it might be going out, right? Like that ball, like that ball. What good examples, Joey. So listen to your partner. If you think it's going to be extremely difficult overhead, listen to your partner. They should be communicating with you effectively if you're going to do well in tournaments. Here is another good example of a beautiful overhead. Now in this example, the man in white has a beautiful overhead, right? So I'd recommend hitting it more cross court, get the man in the black shirt involved. This is an example of what I'm talking about. Take a look. They lob cross court. The person with the head of steam took the lob and got right back in the point without his partner moving at all. So when I say head of steam, think of a safety in football, right? He turns and runs. That's what I mean by the head of steam. And it's extremely effective. If you take too many small steps back, you might get injured. And I'll point that out later in the video. So yes, you will be hated by all your opponents. Colin Johns agrees with me in this round, but he says the lob, whether it's offensive or defensive, it's a viable option, should be used more, especially in tournament play. Especially in tournament play. So this is a secret. If you can't snap that overhead, probably your rotator cuff is in trouble. And you know, you've probably used a lot throughout your life. I recommend the sky hook. The sky hook, you're running back, do the sky hook. This is effective, gets you back in the point. You might not win the point off the sky hook, but you won't lose the point. This sky hook is so effective. Mark Napotovich just hit it there. He's in the red shirt. And take a look. Lydia's going to hit this later in the point. The sky hook is so effective, tough to get injured, and it's still a viable option. It really is. It's offensive if you hit it right. I would like to see more people coaching the sky hook. Take a look at the man in the near right hand corner. What did he do wrong when he hit that overhead? This is a foot fault. People do it all the time. It's getting called more and more because umpires are looking for a lot more.
One more thing, if you fake an Ernie, it causes a lop. It's scientifically proven. I've watched so many video, it is true. So if you have good overhead, fake an Ernie, tell your partner to look for that overhead. It happens all the time. It really does. If you're running back and you need to scissor kick then, but like Mark says, if you scissor kick close to the kitchen, what do you do instead? You really, right, yeah. right? We don't want a scissor kick in that situation. Do the Pete Sampras overhead. If you're close to that kitchen line, don't scissor kick. If you're anywhere else on the court, it works, right? So what do you do if you're right next to that kitchen line? The rich, lively, and this is what you do. See that offhand, that left hand? See how he stays balanced with it? And look at his feet, right? He's not moving his feet. He's using that left hand like it's on a shelf. And this is why you don't take too many small steps. I told you I'd show you. That's Martin Johnston. He was okay. But don't take too many small steps. That's why I coach at Head Esteem. I think it's a lot safer. Well, lovers, what are your views on lobs? And what are your views on this video? It's a very good tip from Colin Johns. I suggest you click on it right now. And don't forget to have a good day.